All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Working on the 400 today, gonna show y'all some stuff that I think every home engine builder should know. Uh, it may be a refresher for a lot of people, but maybe it'll help you with your build. This is my 1975 400 block. If you haven't been keeping up with a build, uh, this is a cast crank. 440 source rods, and these are the KB240 pistons. They are 30 over. Uh, that piston is 15 thousandths in the deck. The block has been decked. And what I want to do today is check my piston to valve clearance. Besides that, I got my rockers mocked up here. Um, these are actually 440 source rockers. There we go. Lumerilla rocker shafts, 1.5 ratio. Um, but besides checking piston to valve clearance, which would be the distance between the valve and the piston inside that pocket, I'm also going to check the quench area. So that would be the distance between the top of the piston and that pad right there. So... We're going to get both those measured today, and that will give us a good idea of kind of how efficient the engine is going to be. Also, when I check the uh, valve to piston clearance, piston to valve, whatever you want to call it, to actually be on that side, um, it'll let me know if I can go to a larger cam in the future. So I know this cam might need to be updated, upgraded. Um, it is a hydraulic roller cam, and I'm using solid roller lifters. So I got those mocked into place. I'm also gonna be checking my push rod length. I made myself a homemade checker here. You can see, um, basically it's just a push rod that I cut into two and put a piece of all thread through. So we'll see if it's strong enough to be able to cycle the engine over and check that piston to valve clearance. Let me pop a head off real quick. There's more to discuss. So here's what I got. Got myself a little Play-Doh here. You could use clay or whatever. Um, and what we're checking right now is going to be the quench. Some people call it squish, I guess. And I'll just lay a piece of that right there where I know uh, basically it won't get into the combustion chamber or into the rings or whatever whenever I roll this engine over. So I rotated my piston down some. I have that here. I'm going to go first without a gasket just to show you, because whenever we get a gasket, whatever thickness your gasket is, you just add that compressed thickness to whatever your quench is. I'll get my head. And I drew kind of a, a little circle there. Basically what's happening when it quenches here, the piston pushes against that, it's gonna force all the air to go that way or under the exhaust valve. So every time that comes up, it's forcing the air back into the chamber, back into the chamber until it eventually leaves. So knowing that number helps you for most efficiency. Yeah, there we go. And I'm certain that it's flat against the deck all the way. I had to kind of pop it earlier, make it settle in. And I got my bolts. I'm just going to basically bolt around this chamber. I'm not gonna overly tighten them or anything. No need in all that. This is just kind of a mock-up deal anyway, but it's good to know the process. And we can check quench without having a push rod in place, so. If my push rod that I made bends, then it is what it is. I won't be able to check the piston to valve clearance until I get a stiffer push rod in place, but I'm gonna try it today and y'all get to watch it. So let me tighten those down. Now it's just easy as rolling the engine back over. Piston coming up. I can go backwards. Oh, 
perfect. Now I'll pop the head off. Okay, I'm gonna take her off real slowly and hope that our Play-Doh stayed down. It did, all right. And I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see where it's smashed down right here. I'll get my razor blade and we'll cut that in half and look at it. Try to cut right through the center. Okay. Now I can show you. So I know I have my pistons. My piston to deck height is about 15,000. So between the piston and the top of the deck is 15. My head gaskets uh, that I had planned on running are the Cometics that are 27 thousandths multi-layer steel. So 27 and 15 would be 42. So whatever I have right here, that should be, in theory, 15 and a half thousandths. I can compare it with some feeler gauges. I can see that it's fairly thin. Um, and my stuff may have sprung back just a little bit, if you see it. But that's a pretty decent quench. Um, a thinner gasket may have helped me. Also, if I had decked more off this block, it could have helped me some more. But a lot of guys out there, a lot of engine builders out there will give you a range and say uh, 35 to 45 thousandths is perfect or 40 thousandths is perfect. I think uh, Motor Trend may have it as 30 thousandths being the max. So any more than that at, at high piston speed, you could have a problem. I think I'm I'm going to be just fine for this engine. If I went zero deck, then I could have adjusted my quench with the thickness of my head gasket. So if if this was zero decked, and I had went with a twenty seven thousandths head gasket, that may have been a little too thin. Although I'm trying to grab as much compression as I could, uh, just because, like I said, at that this is such a short stroke of an engine the pistons will be moving so quickly up and down, up and down. Um, if, if, if there's ever any air or under heat, this stuff expands and gets very, very close to the uh, top of the piston. So I'm in a definitely safe zone. We can go ahead and check our piston to valve clearance now. And the biggest reason I wanted to do that was in case, see, I can pop that up. Um, and I could even measure it with my calipers if I want to. I don't know. So there's my piece. There's my caliper. I mean, this is kind of splitting hairs, but it is what it is. Like I'm starting to squeeze down on it at 29, 25 ish. See it left a little indentation in there. So I've got plenty and I should be fine, but this is an easy way for you to check your quench. If you had no idea and you popped an engine apart, this could be a helpful step for you. Get my piston to valve checked. I'm gonna go across right here. You don't have to have a ginormous piece, but I'll grab a couple pieces, basically the two that I just used. It's good to have, Ed at Ed's machine told me it's nice to use soft clay or Play-Doh so that your the hardened stuff is not, um, it's not too hard. See, I'll even, I can lay me a long piece across here. It's gonna smash, it's not. And I'm only able to check one at a time anyway. And if you do it wrong, you can redo it. It's not a big deal. These are eight CC valve reliefs that are cut into these pistons and they're both um, symmetrical, same size. There's not a big and a little. I'm only able to check one at a time whenever I bolt my head down, but I've got my Johnson high lift solid roller lifter in and I'm gonna bolt it back up I uh, Set my lash. I'll show you that stuff real quick, but I'm I think I'm gonna do it without a gasket right now 
just because I can always add the thickness of whatever gasket I'm going to use. And I don't have a compressed gasket right now. So if I put a gasket on that's uh, a throwaway gasket, 50 thousandths, if I have a large amount then, it, it's kind of still a guessing game. So it's it, I think it's more accurate to go um, piston right onto the deck. So let me get my piston bolted back or my... I think it's more accurate to go head bolted right down on the deck. So let me bolt my head back down. This is my measured push rod that I had from earlier. And it's pretty close. I know it's not exact, but what I did here was take the, uh, take a long push rod, cut it, splice that piece in, and then I tighten my nuts against it. So it shouldn't flex because this all thread runs into here about an inch on each way, but we'll see. I will start with my intake side because that's how I have my rocker set up. Mm -hmm. I did go ahead and do my side to side play on these. It's set fairly close to what it should be. And I'm gonna put at least three hold downs in so the shaft's not flexing somewhere else where it shouldn't be. All right, I had my lash. There we go. I can set my lash up to about, I'll set it like two thousandths. I can zero lash it if I want to, but I gotta get back to top dead center. Or the backside of that cam lobe. On the intake. Okay. See she's plenty loose. All I'm going for is zero. Hold zero. Got my feeler gauges. I'll give it five thousandths. At least that's something. It's not. Remember, this is a solid lifter on a hydraulic roller cam, so I can always change that later. There we go. Got that good. I'm not going to over tighten that now just because I want this stuff to be there. Pull out my feeler. And let's roll it over and see. I need to go slow and be sure my nut inside here clears because it'll be going upward. Going up. We cleared. There's the top of my load. Bring y'all through so you can see it. Top of the lobe right through here. You can see that. Even while this is here. I can bring it around and look for coil bind. I know I'm a coil bind it looks they're a mile away from each other but Ed, Ed's machine already checked that for me also this is a 1.5 rocker I'm going to switch to a 1.6 rocker so let me get you brought back around I'll go back to the back side of my cam lobe that should be it with just a little bit of lash now we can pull it apart and check it and while at this stage, I went ahead and slid my light under here. It's also good to be able to check the push, ro push rod to wall clearance, sidewall clearance. So if it needed a little more side to side, I could cheat and put another spacer in here. I really want to try to keep my roller centered on the valve stem. I'll do another video on setting all that up, but uh, the up and down motion of it right now, see how we have... Looks like plenty on top and bottom. 
I'm gonna cycle the engine again and double check that just to be sure there's no chance of it rubbing. Because if it does rub, it's a lot easier to pull this head off and put it on this bench and then take my die grinder and grind than it would be to have the head on the engine. And then you find out after you bolt the stuff together, instead of having to pull that head back off with those 17 bolts and you've already crushed the gasket and everything else. So something else to good, good to check. Uh, I'm going to cycle it over and look just to be sure everything is clean and clear there. Here's our moment of truth. Come up slowly. There's a mile, a country mile space right there. What I will do is go ahead and cut it in half, just like we did our other. First, I can split it through here because nothing touched there, obviously. And right here. Country mile, that's wild. Look at that. Yeah, they could have, uh, I think they just do it better safe than sorry kind of deal, but that's right through there. Currently this cam, I think is a 538 lift or something with a one five rocker. So we may have sprung back some, but that's, whew, that's a lot. Let me grab my calipers. I'm scared to even measure it. There we are. It didn't actually smash right here. It smashed further up and that's why my, I may can use this other one that has a better indentation in it. There we go. See the circle in the clay itself? I mean, come on. 264 thousandths. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it, but yeah. Uh, the, the pistons probably still did need a relief. That's good. And I will get closer whenever I you know, another, add another 40 thousandths to it. So that'd be 220. Plenty, way plenty. They give you plenty, that's for certain. Um, I'm glad we checked it now that we know, but quench is pretty good. That's, that's a, a silver lining for us. I appreciate y'all watching and following along with my build series. Um, you, I, I think most people at home can tell I'm not just throwing this together. I like to check stuff and kind of bring y'all along for that journey. Um, I am going to double check everything I did today when I put the one six rockers on and I'm going to double check them after I cut my push rods to go in. So I'll bring y'all along uh, when I cut those push rods and I got to get the heads bolted on soon. So maybe we can make a video out of that doing heads, push rods and valve train setup. That might be a good one. Thank y'all for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Here's Mopar Joe and <laughs> and Eric Dudman. This is cool. This is so damn cool. I don't know what to say. Good. Donnie didn't do too